up? What's up, you guys? You are going to love this episode because today I am joined with my friend, Chris Carithian, and he is going to drop some gems about education and paying for education, which as a parent has been one of those things I have regret, like I have a lot of anxiety thinking about, but fortunately was in a position to you know, fund my daughter's education so that they have 529s where they'll both have $100,000 when they go to college. And, you know, that's not probably going to be enough, but I'll okay. be able. <laughs> it's something, <laughs> <I'll>, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot more than what I had. I didn't exactly. have a dollar. Okay. Exactly. But anyway, I want people to learn more about you, Chris, and learn your background. I want to know, like, how you started on this journey, where you're coming from, and how you have the gems that you have right now. Great. Well, first of all, Seema, I just want to say thank you so much for allowing me to speak on your platform and to your people because it's an honor and privilege for me to even be here speaking to you at this time. So, so thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm Love real. It. You know, so yeah, we're going to talk about all of that. And the reason I'm able to talk about this is because I did everything wrong, right? I thought I knew the plan. I thought I knew the path, but a little backstory about me. You know, I'll, I'll go back to when I was going about to go to college, right? And so you know, I had a few scholarships. I graduated from a school in Georgia, you know, so I had the Hope Scholarship, which is a state funded scholarship if you have a certain GPA, which most states have some type of state funded scholarship, right? Just not um, California. <laughs> just not California, right? <laughs> so they have other scholarship programs that you could be eligible for. But <clears throat> so I was eligible for the state funded Georgia Hope Scholarship because I had over a 3.0 or B average for those that don't know what the grading system is like. And so I had that, and then I was involved with Boys and Girls Clubs. So there's this teen leadership organization within the Boys and Girls Club called Keystone, and I was a part of that. And each Boys and Girls Club around whatever city you're in, they always have what they call a Youth of the Year program for each city. And so back in the day, they used to have a Youth of the Year for each state had their own Youth of the Year. And then that Youth of the Year would go on Oprah. Like when Oprah had a show, they would go on Oprah and then oh, each of the wow. 50 states would be showcased. Yeah. So when I was, I was the first runner up for Metro Atlanta. So somebody else got it right before me. And I think that oh, was the last year that they dang. went to Oprah. So I never got to go on Oprah. But so shout out to Oprah. If you're listening to this, guess what? I don't care which show on the own network I can go on, but I will <laughs> gladly be a guest on your show, you know? Okay. I mean, it's not going to be as good as Seema's show, but listen, it's like levels, right? Like, here. Right, right. right. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. It's levels. <laughs> and so I graduated high school, went to, went to uh, Savannah State University as my alma mater. So I went to Savannah State on scholarship, right? No loans, went to school. But the thing is, I always tell students, work hard, then play hard, right? Even if you have habits in high school that still resulted in an A. For example, I was a master procrastinator, but... I could cram for an exam the night before, or I can write or type a paper. I don't even think it was type because we didn't have. I would write a paper the night before, right, and then and then I would get an A on it. And I thought I could sustain those habits when I got into college, right? But fast forward, I ended up with a one point. Six five GPA. Wait a minute. Can I yeah. tell you that was like <laughs> my first semester GPA as well? See? Like, and I was a four point something student. Right. Right. You know, exactly. I just never learned how to study. So this is so interesting to me. And I don't think I've ever shared that publicly. <laughs> but oh, I like how awful. we're like, we're vibing. Like, exactly. I, get like, I get what you're saying. Yes. I had the same experience, yes. right? Yes. And so I, I had that GPA and it was like, even though I was on campus away from the house, like my parents were just like, you know, this is not acceptable, right? Like, so <laughs> I'm first generation American. All my family, my parents, my mother, my father, all my grandparents, everybody's from Jamaica. Right. And so a first generation American. So, you know, it, it, when you come up in a house in the West Indy house, it's just like, you know, you, you, unless you're getting all A's, you know, this is not acceptable. So when I had a failing GPA, oh, my mom about lost it. She said, you know, you know, you can't come back here if they kick you out. Right. And so I didn't know if she was playing or not, but I just took it as, OK, she's probably not playing. And so every semester after that, I got nothing but A's and B's and I ended up graduating with honors. But after that first checkpoint, after the spring semester, so in college, you go fall and then spring, just like most schools, right? And then you're off for the summer or you could take classes. But at spring, they checked it again. And what happened was my GPA wasn't high enough and I lost all my scholarships. 
So yeah. yeah, yeah. So then I had to take out student loans, right? And I had to take out student loans for those next two years. And I ended up getting scholarships my junior year and my senior year, but I still had some loans, you know, in that in that junior year. But uh, but I had to do nothing but get A's and B's every semester after that in order for me to graduate with honors, right? Right, because once you have that low GPA, it's it's easy to drop your GPA. It's easy. hella hard to bring it up. So, <laughs> for I, real. And I know, cause I was like all A's like the rest of the time, but still my GPA was like three, it was like the struggling 3.5. <laughs> <Like, laughs> yeah, you like, oh, you got a 3.5? Yeah, 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 you don't know what I had to do. Exactly. 3.5, right? Yes. I had to work some miracles. I had to put some magic dust on that thing. Yes. Like it was a lot, right? I mean, study right. groups and just structure and like you had to really change up what you were doing. So it, was, it wasn't that I didn't have fun in college, but I had to really get to the work hard part, then play hard, right? Like mm -hmm. I, want, I want everybody to understand like college is more than just going to school, going to your room and eating. Like you want to experience the whole college experience, right? But you got to put your priorities in order. Once you put your priorities in your order, if you're a student listening to this or if you're a parent, just kind of keep ingraining that in your child. And hopefully it sinks into where they'll be like, you know what? Let me do what I need to do, right? Mm -hmm. And so we're going to talk about like all the scholarships and ways that you can pay for college. But but so fast forward, let's go into the real world. So I graduated, you know, got had a couple jobs or whatever. I ended up fast forward a few jobs. I ended up working for this billion dollar company as a project analyst. And the day after my son was born, they said, "Congratulations, Chris, on your new baby boy." But we got to let you go. Ooh. Right. Nice. <laughs> right. My wife wasn't working. They were like, we got to let you go. It's just, we got to lay off 1200 people. It's a recession. We're sorry. We got to let you go. And so and my that's whole- similar to what's going on right now. Right. <laughs> and then the thing is, I thought yeah. I followed a plan because I was taught, go to school, get good <laughs> yeah. grades, yeah. get a high paying job and you're good. Like and that's what set. our parents set us up for, right? So that's all we know. Like That's all, all we know play. because a lot of times that's all they knew. So they were like, yeah, like do that put some away for a rainy day. And then some parents might say, and invest, but they don't really know what that means. They just like, put some away for a rainy day and, and invest, invest right. in the future. <laughs> you know, and you're like, and that's your whole financial literacy education. Like that's, that's it. That's, that's it. it. In I, don't mean, I didn't get that invest part. I didn't get that. Invest part. <laughs> right. Neither it was did just I. like, go to the best paying school and get that job. And then everything else will be okay. <laughs> they said, get that paper, right? Yes, get that paper. That's okay? it. And then, yes. you know, and then some parents say, get your pension. I'm like, ain't no, there's no such thing as a pension these days, <laughs> That's my, right? my grandfather said that. Right. You like, better get your pension. <laughs> get your pension. No. So I, I thought I followed the rules, right? But I was getting, you know, educated on my academics, right? My academic literacy, you know, but, but my financial literacy was 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 through you know in shambles because had i set myself up you know with things we'll talk about like having your emergency fund and all these other things i wouldn't have been hit and so here's another thing because we're talking about like you know security and protection and things like that so two months two and a half months after i got laid off you know we're at the house you know the baby's there it was a blessing in disguise because i was able to spend that intimate time with the baby instead of going to work every day and coming back so i was like my wife and i were here with our son chris jr cj and it's just like one day he wakes up in the middle of the night and he's like he wants to get fed so i'll go to the bottle warmer no before that he wakes up and then i hear people outside i'm like why is it so loud outside like it's like one or two in the morning so i look outside the window and we stayed in an apartment complex at a time I looked out the window and everybody's looking at the building, right? And so I said, babe, let me go see what's going on. So I go outside and I look up and the apartment's on fire. <gasps> the, yeah, the apartment <laughs> building is on fire, like literally oh, yeah. on fire. So I was like, babe, the apartment's on fire. Let me go warm up a bottle. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I'm not even thinking. I'm like, no, we need to get out of this house, right? Right. And so anyway, we get the baby, we get CJ and we just grab what we can grab. I think I grabbed my keys and, and that was it. And then we go outside and then it started off because one of the girls across the hall upstairs, she must have gone to the club, left the stove on, and then 25 families are displaced. The whole building went down. Like oh, I was shit. thinking the fire department was going to come. They couldn't get the water pressure up. It was like <gasps> a big mess. Yeah. And we look and then we're like, this thing is spreading. Like it just started on one porch. And then little by little, like it consumed the whole building, right? Oh my God. And then, and guess, guess who didn't pay the $12 a month for renter's insurance? Cause it wasn't oh. required. So oh. literally lost everything. Everything. all the money that I had, cause 
because the company I was getting paid, I mean, that I was working for, I was getting paid every week. We were going on vacations and everything. And so all the money we had, we were putting toward baby stuff. And so I was depleting my savings because it's just like, after we get all the stuff for the baby, I'll just stack it back up, right? Like no problem. But I didn't account for losing a job. And then I didn't account for our apartment fire because it's like, you're responsible, but then because of somebody else being irresponsible, it can still affect you. Exactly. Right? exactly. And so I, you know, we didn't have rent insurance. We lost everything. I didn't have any, we didn't have any money. So Red Cross had to give us a $250 gift card so we can get clothes from Walmart. So here we are, I'm working with this billion dollar company. And then moments later, you know, um, we need a gift card from Red Cross so we can get clothes from Walmart. And we didn't have anywhere oh to God. stay. So luckily my wife's parents had a spare bedroom that they just cleared out so that we can live out of for the next six to eight months until we're able to get back on our feet. So it's like one moment you're high, everything's rocking and then literally can lose everything, you know, minus wow. our lives. And mm -hmm. so we count our blessing because it was like our lives. The thing that I ate the most that, that I lost is like, in high school, I had like, I had pictures and videos and everything, Aww. those memories, right? Yay. And this is like, those are the things that money can't replace, right? And so that's the only thing I regret. Like stuff, stuff comes and goes. TV, right. sofas, exactly. like all exactly. that stuff, clothes, like you can replace that stuff. But those, those other things that, that money can't buy, those are the things you want to cherish. Right. So that I just said all that just to say how it's important to have your finances in order and to understand, you know, how financial literacy works and why it's important outside of you, just your academics and your grades or even getting a job, right? Or even owning a job because there's some business owners that still don't have it figured out because they're living, you know, <laughs> month to month because of the expenses and, and, and paychecks, for examples, you know, they don't understand just because you're making more doesn't mean you know how to manage more, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about the principles you have behind financial success. And so I ended up getting a job after that, working in financial aid back in my alma mater at Savannah mm -hmm. State, right? Mm -hmm. And so my mission, it wasn't my mission initially, but what I saw when I would see grandmothers and, and aunts and uncles and parents come in and be terrified at the financial aid experience and, and the process. They didn't know, it was the first time sending their child off to college and they didn't know what to do, right? Mm -hmm. And so I always thought if somebody was talking to my grandmother, how would I want them to talk to her? How would I, would I want them to walk her through the process of getting everything squared away? And so once I thought about that, I just treated everybody the same as if it was my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And so I'm on a mission now because another thing I saw was the students would max out on these student loans, meaning they would take out the most they can get in student loans. And then, <laughs> it looks like a guilty face right there. Listen, so I was about to say, ask me how I know about that. Yeah. Ask me how I know about yeah. that. Yeah. I was exactly. doing like, boy, I was too long balling. You, you know? ain't the only one, okay? <laughs> you couldn't tell me nothing when them FAFSA checks came in. Listen, you know? when them checks came in, everybody was like, all right, where are we going? Right. What are we doing? What we, where, right. what's the, you know, so, I mean, you see classmates going to Cancun, mm -hmm. going straight to the mall, yeah. you know, getting used cars. Like, they were yeah. like, wait a minute. Also, we just, we just out here living good, aren't we? Mm -hmm. You know? And so... And so I would see that, but the students still now do this to this day and they'll max out and then they'll max out and they'll graduate with all this student loan debt when, it, you know, it only costs a fraction of the amount that they took out. And so, you know, this U.S. is over $1.7 trillion in student loan debt. You know, that's our deficit right now. And, you know, it keeps growing and growing. So like my personal mission, even outside of, you know, what I did for Savannah State, even still to this day, because like I'm over mentoring right now. And so mm -hmm. I infuse financial literacy with the mentoring that I do. And then I'm on a mission to eliminate the need for student debt. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's what we're going to talk. That's the good stuff. Yes. That's what we're going to talk about yes. today to show you how to never have to take out a student loan. Like never. Okay. I'm going to show yes. you how easy I'm it excited. is. I'm excited. Yes. yes. Because we need to know this. And you know what? I just want to say like, I have a, I do some content for other FinTech companies and I have this post on TikTok talking about, you know, how I had $180,000 in student loan debt, paid back over 150000 of it, but still owe $100,000. Yes. Like, and that's how yeah. the student loan system works. And then people are on there like, well, you should not took out, you shouldn't have took out debt if you don't know how debt works and all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like, I was 
17 years old. Right. Do you think I'm really supposed to understand this? Like my dad never, this, that wasn't my experience for my dad. My dad went to school on his GI bill. He didn't understand student loan debt and school was affordable when our parents went to school. So it's just like, we got to look at like some things and like, like really understand that we're blaming the wrong people. Like, how are we looking at like all these people now that are begging for this forgiveness, not because they don't want to pay back loans, but probably because they've been paying on these loans for hella long and not seeing their balances go down and not in a financial position to continue to do so. But you know what? We're going to send people to school debt free from now on because good people need to know how not to take out loans for college, how to not be like me and graduate with $200,000 in student loans. So how can we send our kids to school debt free? Absolutely. So let's start with the foundation, which you're doing an amazing job because you're just like, it's probably not going to be enough. But listen, $100,000 per child for 529 plan is a huge, like, let's give it up. For those that are listening, if you're in your car, wherever, well, if you're not in your car, just kind of clap your mind. But wherever you are, you've got to put them hands on that wheel, okay? Do not take the hands off that wheel, but let's clap it up because that is a huge thing, right? And for those that do not know what a 529 plan is, it's a college savings vehicle where you can put your money in tax-free and you can use it for educational expenses when your child goes to college, okay? Now, even if, let's say that your child has so many scholarships that they never need it, guess what? You as a grandparent can gift that 529 money to your grandchild. Okay. You could also take out that scholar if you can prove that the person has a, the kid has a scholarship. You could also take that money that scholar. Like you just have to prove that this prove was that actually. They have enough and this yeah, right. and then you Absolutely. can take that money out if you want to. But like like yeah. Chris was saying, you could also gift it to other kids, your yes. cousins, anybody in your family. There's a qualifying list of other people that you can transfer to, and you can use it for yourself if you want to go back to school. Exactly. If you want to go back to school, <laughs> you could absolutely use it for yourself. So that's usually the foundation I start with, depending on where you're starting, right? And sometimes. Times, well, a lot of times when I'm talking to parents, it's just like, my child's about to graduate in a few months. So right. how can you make this possible, right? Yes. And so, and so if you're in that position, if you have a child that's a junior, senior in high school, or they're in college now and you've already taken out loans, I'll show you how, you know, if we have time, we'll talk about some ways where the loan could be paid off even before they graduate. So they could still graduate debt-free without you having to come up with extra money out of your pocket as a parent. Okay, and so that's the foundation. Another thing, if your child is in, in high school, there's a website called Raise Me, raiseme.com or raise.me, where if your child is in a leadership organization or they're part of a, a sports team or they're part of a certain club or group, or if they're getting certain, certain grades in class, guess what? They can get scholarships committed to them from different colleges and universities just for doing something that they're already doing. So Raise Me, raise.me. And guess what? There was an article, I forgot the young lady's name, but she was featured in CNN. She got over $80,000 just from Raise Me, okay? From different scholarships. And so that's one. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about a three-step framework that, that, that I usually walk my students through. The top one, the middle and the top tier of the, what I call the debt-free degree triangle, we probably won't focus as on as much in this interview, but I'll explain it just so you can have an idea of how it works, okay? And so you have three tiers. You have the base, which is scholarships, and then the middle is budgeting or money management, and then the third is what I call automated income streams, okay? And each one builds on the other in order to graduate debt-free. So the most, like, there's a, there's an article they did last year, the year before last, I believe it was last year, but Forbes did it, and it says, the title was 100 million dollars over a hundred million dollars in scholarship monies go unclaimed each year over a hundred million dollars in scholarship money goes unclaimed so that means there's scholarship money out there for you or for your child depending on who's listening to this right there's money out there for you that just needs you to apply for it okay so that's it sounds oversimplified but i'm telling you there's more students that do not do this because they don't believe there's scholarships out there for them there are a couple of barriers and hurdles that students just don't apply for and i'll tell you the top reasons why they don't apply number one they don't know where to find the scholarships number two they don't know what to write about because a lot of the scholarships applications require some type of essay right and so if we can eliminate the obstacle of not knowing where to find the scholarships and we can eliminate 
the whole burden of you having to write all these essays over and over and over again. Guess what? If we can eliminate those two big barriers, then hopefully that encourages you to follow through and apply for all these scholarships. Sound like a deal? I love it. I'm excited right. to hear about this. I'm yes, like, let's get yes. on this framework. Let's we are go. we are getting into this triangle. <laughs> let's go. So, and then if you think about it, like if you look want to look at a deeper level, like there are three phases. So scholarships, that's the dependent phase. Budgeting or money management, that's the independent phase where you manage your own money. And then automated income streams, that's where it's interdependent, right? Because that's where you're talking about passive income streams. And then you have to rely on them just as much as they rely on you for presenting the value of some form. Okay. And so scholarships. So this is, this is what you really need in order to increase your odds or likelihood of getting scholarships. I've worked with students for over 17 years in financial aid, financial literacy, higher ed, high schools. Everybody, listen to this carefully. Everyone that's applied for at least 100 qualifiable scholarships, 100 scholarships, everybody, and this is over the last 17 years, everyone that I've come in contact with that's applied for at least 100 scholarships have gotten scholarships. <laughs> I love it. Let's just stop right there. <laughs> like, yeah, let's just stop like, right there. Who's beating those stats? <laughs> who's beating those? Like, that's Nobody. 100% success rate. I love it. applied for 100, at least 100 qualifiable scholarships. Like, you're not going to be like, okay, you're a, a guy, a right-handed guy applying for a basketball scholarship when it's a, a women's left-handed basket weaving scholarship, right? right? Like those two just don't connect. Okay. So that's why I, that's why I qualified it with the term qualified scholarships, right? Mm -hmm. You want to be at least in the ballpark, right? But if you're applying for at least a hundred scholarships, guess what? You will get scholarships. If you don't message me, hit me up and guess what? I'll give you some scholarship money. I'm putting that publicly <laughs> on the podcast. And that's the challenge that I had to yes, everybody. Yes, that's the challenge. I love that's it. Challenge, okay? We got, we got to hold people to the fire. That's right. Absolutely. Yes. And so that's why I always challenge people to do it because guess what? It gets them in the habit and it gets them at least to take the challenge on to do that. Now, you're like, okay, I apply for 100 scholarships, but what's going to increase my odds of getting these scholarships? That's where we're going to start. So where do we find the scholarships? There's so many apps, right? And so many websites and scholarship portals, right? But we talked about Raise Me. So if you're in high school, that's a good one. And then if make sure I don't forget, but there's scholarships where you don't even have to write essays. They wow. give out lots of money. So we'll talk about that in a second if I don't, if I don't forget. But you have, <clears throat> you have portals like Scholarly. And I always talk about Scholarly first and it's like my go-to because Scholarly is a scholarship portal that was created by somebody who cracked the code on scholarships. So Christopher Gray, Christopher Gray was featured on Shark Tank. His scholarship portal was actually featured on Shark Tank. Christopher Gray was homeless at different times at, at some points during his high school year in his senior year in high school. And he knew that the only way to get out of his current situation right? Living situation was by going off to college. So he ended up going to the library. He'd be on his phone applying for scholarships. And he ended up getting over $1.3 million in scholarships, $1.3 wow. million wow. in scholarships. So he understood how to get scholarships, right? So he goes off to Drexel University in Philly. He meets some friends and partners and they end up creating the software known as Scholarly. And then what happened was when he went off to school, because he can go to any school he wants. One of the biggest scholarships that he had was the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Scholarship, okay? But, but he ended up going off to school, and then he built it, and then he was featured on Shark Tank. The rest is history. But what Scholarly does is, like some other scholarship portals, but it, you put in all your miscellaneous information, all the personal information, like detail. They'll ask you a lot of things. If you're left-handed, if you have certain diets, if you, you check off everything that applies to you, and what happens is the software goes out and searches for vetted scholarships, keyword vetted, because some sites will send you scams and like sign up for this credit card and loans and all this other stuff. And now you're in a worse off position than when you started to look for scholarships. But it goes out and finds all the scholarships and it does two things. You can filter it by deadline date. So let's say if you click deadline date and then you see all these scholarships that have a deadline of this week, right? Most people think you only apply for scholarships in the springtime. Guess what? You can apply for scholarships year round, okay? Number two, you can filter it based on what's the likelihood of you getting that scholarship, meaning how much does it match based on your profile information? How much does the scholarship match? And they'll rate that from zero to 10. And so if you have a lot of 10s, 9s, 8s, guess what? These scholarships were made for you, right? 
And then you have other scholarship websites like Scholarship Owl and Bold and other scholarship forms that you can look into. As a matter of fact, while I'm thinking about it, because I, I I only do this for my for my for any time I want to guess on a podcast, I only do this for for those guests. But there's a website link, and and I'll say it, you can probably put it in the notes, but it's tiny.cc/scholarshipschapter. That's all lowercase. Tiny.cc/scholarshipschapter, and that's the free chapter from my book on scholarship. So everything I'm saying, if it's going too fast, you'll have all the ins and outs, what to do, how to do it, and the order to do it in that chapter. It's like no download. It's just a straight to the Google link, Google Drive link, and then you'll be able to pull up that chapter. Okay, so that's my gift to your listeners. Just for being a listener of this great show, I want you all to have that. If you're a parent or a student that's looking to go to college for free, that's definitely going to help you. Okay? We love you for that, Chris. Oh, Thank well, I love you. y'all too. <laughs> <laughs> and so so then, so now we, we knocked out the barrier of entry for where to find the scholarships, right? Now we have scholarships finding you. Now, most students don't want to apply for, they write these essays. So it's like, Chris, how can we figure out a way to where you said a hundred scholarships? Like most people get burnt out after five or 10. They're like, I can't do this no more. Like, this is a lot. Like <laughs> I might could do one a week or once every other day, but like you're talking about a hundred scholarships. That's, that's almost impossible. So what I usually tell students is if you have, and see, see, this is this is the key right here. There's only five essays that you need. There are only five essays. So I know I said 100 scholarships, but listen, there are only five. And you'll only ever need one or a combination of these five essays. So I want you to pay attention. It's in the notes in the chapter that you'll see, but I'm going to say it to you if you're listening to me. All right, so here go the five essays in no particular order. Number one essay is your rags to riches essay. Your rags to riches essay, and once you have these five, I'll tell you what to do with them. Your rags to riches essay is talking about some type of obstacle or challenge that you've had to overcome to get to the point where you are now. How did you overcome it or what did you do to get to the point to where you overcame that obstacle and where do you plan on going? Scholarship donors, businesses, organizations, they want to know that if we give you this money, if you come up on hard, challenging times where you feel like dropping out, Are you going to dig down and push through and succeed and graduate college? Because the last thing they want to do is give all this money to someone who's probably not going to graduate, right? Because they don't have that, that, that grit or that wherewithal to push through when they see challenges come. But if they see somebody who has a story of triumph and overcoming, guess what? They're like, we want to support what you want to do because listen, you've overcome all of that. Guess what? We want to push you towards success, whatever you, whatever it is you want to do. And here's another thing that I want to mention, because a lot of times people think that I don't have that quote unquote Tyler Perry story, right? I don't have those external things that I dealt with, but guess what? There are some students who deal with some internal stuff, right? So there's one of my students who I worked with and she didn't have one of those, you know, chaotic external things. But the thing is she held herself to a high standard where it's just like, she was almost at the level of perfection where she was like, I got to make it perfect. I got to do this. And if she didn't reach that level, she would get anxiety or she would get stressed or she would feel overworked and overwhelmed, right? Especially with her major that she was in. And so what she did was she found an outlet in yoga, right? And, And learning about mental health strategies. And then by her doing that, that gave her a way of escape so that she can, you know, be able to focus back on her studies, get back on a better schedule and regimen. And then she was able to flourish and succeed. And so that was her. That's a a great example because it also shows to people that you figured out a way to be able to cope and to overcome something that's hard internally, which a lot of people don't do. Even if they do have these external battles, a lot of people don't know how to like be introspective and to actually figure things out. So that's a, that's a perfect example. I love that. Good. I'm glad. Yeah. Yeah, Cause then she was like, Wow, I never thought about that because she, number one, she didn't think she was worthy. So before I even continue, I want you to know that you are worthy of these scholarships. I don't care what type of situation you're in or whatever, like get out of your mind that you're not worthy of the scholarships because there are people who want to hear your story. They want to give money to you and you're the person that they're looking for. So what happens is, it it might sound oversimplified, but it really comes down to a numbers game. And the more opportunities that you put yourself out there, and guess what? 
then the, the likelihood or increased chances are you getting this money because guess what? There's scholarship dollars with your name on it, but if you never take that shot, what they say, I think Wayne, Wayne Gretzky says, and a lot of other people say it, but they say you miss a thousand shots that you don't take, right? <laughs> you miss a thousand shots, a thousand, a hundred percent of the shots that you don't take, right? You miss. And so keep that in mind. You are worthy of it and you deserve these scholarships, okay? So now that I said that, that was a little sidebar, but just uh, that mental status, I really want you all to know that it's all mental. Once you understand that it's mental and you can do it, you will do it. So that's your racks of riches. Next one is your impact essay. What type of impact do you plan on making in your community, in the world, just in general? What type of impact? And then another thing I like to add on is like impact slash leadership. Right? Because it's just like, along with your impact, like how have you made an impact through leadership? Like how have you led groups of people? How have you been in a leadership situation? Like how, have you, how has your leadership made an impact in whatever it is that you're doing? So you got rags to riches, you got your impact essay, impact slash leadership. Your third one is your, what will you do with the money essay? <laughs> now that's a long name, but you get it. What will you do with the money? And so outside of like paying for school, like there's some students who are, who need like, who had to pay lab fees or they got to pay for a lab coat, you know, or Let me they got to, when you said that, I was like, wait, I mean, why would they ask you what you need to, what you need the money for? I need the money to pay for school. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. But there's these, all these other things, right. like, wait, all these other majors ain't got to pay for all this stuff. You know yes. what I mean? Like prime example, you probably could attest to that. You're like, yeah, I had to pay association yeah. fees and yes. I had to pay for lab equipment and all this yes. other stuff. Yes, it was right? a lot of fees that went. Well, for my undergrad, I was pre-med. So okay. <laughs> yeah, all those lab fees and all that stuff. Yeah. Right? My books were $500, like each. <laughs> each, each. Right. Like, yeah, like, how much you spent on books? $40, $40. Yeah. You know? these majors and stuff. Yeah, yeah. you're like, but I, I'm paying 500 a piece mm -hmm. for my books. Yeah, right. And so yeah. when the student talks about, yeah, well, I don't have to borrow books from my friends. I don't have to borrow lab coats or lab equipment. You know, I can actually have my own. And so when you map this thing out, like it's pretty much like a budget, so to speak, of what mm -hmm. you're going to do with your money. So when people know specifically what you plan on doing with your money, <clears throat> they're going to give it to you. Right. And so, or they're likely to give it to you because you already have a map that plan. Now your fourth one, this is what I call your career slash major like what are you going to do in your career what are you going to do in your, with your major like why are you going to school you know what do you plan on doing and then once you can map that out like you could kind of tie in your impact with your major like what how are you going to change the world after you get this degree how are you going to change this industry what are you going to do like going back to the example with taylor my student she was one thing she wants to do because her area is forensic toxicology Ooh. So she know she knows that's a high stress environment and that mm -hmm. you're looking at, you know, you're looking at a lot of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That can be stressful if you're not used to it. And so so she wants to bring like yoga and mental health strategies to that field mm -hmm. and make it like a norm so that people that are in this industry automatically have proven ways or systematic ways to decompress and you know and not have, get burned out and okay? not get burned yes. out right and so that's that. the type of impact that she wants to make within that's that field, so dope okay yes and so and so so that's it and then the last one the last one so you have your rags and riches you have your impact what will you do with the money you have your career slash major and then your last one is what i call the wild card essay this is usually tied towards some current event so this is always going to change depending on the times so a lot of people are talking about the recession, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people are talking about, okay, well, how's the recession affecting your industry or how's it affecting your community? How's it affecting you, right? How is, and the, or like even a couple of years ago, everybody was talking about COVID and quarantine, right? And every, the whole world being quarantined flipped the whole world upside down, right? How did that affect your industry or affect how business is done or how you interact? And how's it going to change the future? How's it going to affect the future? So you want to talk about, those type of things. But once you have those five essays, you put it in the Google Drive or you throw it in iCloud and now you have access to it from your phone, from your laptop, anywhere. Some people put it on a flash drive or save it to their laptop. But if you're in a situation where I need to apply for this scholarship in the next three hours and my laptop is back at home or my flash drive that I need, no, you can just log into your drive and you'll be able to copy and paste, put in your essay, you can put certain sections from each essay into it. And guess what? You tweak it, make sure you fit the guidelines of how many words it needs to be. And guess what? Now you have your essays and you can wash, rinse, and repeat. Wash, rinse, and repeat. And guess what? Now you have your essays. Now you got the burden or your obstacle of where to find the scholarships because scholarships are finding you now. 
and then what to write about. Now you got your essays out of the way. Now, here's the third part. Once you combine these three, then it increases your chances for success through and through. So a lot of times people are just like, well, how do I apply for 100 scholarships? So let's just say that today is December 1st, right? By February 1st, but so January 1st is 30 days. By February 1st, that's 60 days. By February 1st, that's a, over 120 scholarships that you've now applied for. And most people, most people, when I ask, I say, I usually talk to like a classroom or an arena full of students. I say, raise your hands in the air if you have, if you've applied for at least 100 scholarships, maybe five to 10 people's hands, or let's just say 5% or less of the hands go up. I said, okay, for those that raise your hands, keep them up if you apply for at least 100 scholarships, right? Or no, not 100 scholarships. Raise, keep your hands raised if you receive scholarships and all the hands 100% of the time stays up, right? I said, hands down. How many of you had to take out some form of student loan? Everybody else's hands, the 95% hands had to go up. And then like a light bulb goes off, like maybe I should apply for at least 100 scholarships, right? And so now you know where to find them, how to find them, and now you know what plan to do. So now if you do it in the next two months, whatever today is, just map out two months from now and just do two a day. And then even if you're just doing one of those scholarship portals that I talked to you about, filter it by the deadline and then apply for everything that has a deadline of this week. I don't care if your essay is not that great or if it doesn't really apply to you, just do it and start getting in the habit. After you've done all the essays for this next week, then after the following week, that's when you start doing two a day, okay? And then once you do the two a day, guess what? Now you know where to find the money, how to apply for the money, and how to increase the chances for that money. And then that, my friends, is scholarships. And then I've talked to people who have gotten $300,000 plus a scholarship, millions of scholarships, all, and I've worked with students who got this. Last piece about scholarships, you don't even have to have an essay for some of these scholarships. This one, if you have a 16-year-old or older, you can apply for this scholarship, and the deadline is the second week of January. So depending on where you're listening to this, this application opens up from November to January of every year. This is the Taco Bell Live My Scholarship Foundation scholarship. You just have to do a two-minute video, 30 seconds to two minutes. And one of my students, she did a two-minute video, recorded in a day. She got ten thousand dollars for that two minute Ooh, video. That's what I'm talking about. That's that's a good ROI. Uh, good two thousand dollars for ten minutes. Okay, 10 come on minutes. now. For How many people minutes, make that? Right? Two minutes. Ten thousand for two 10, minutes. Ten thousand yeah. dollars for two minutes. Wait. So I well, I wanted to ask you this question before I forgot. Like, mm -hmm. at what age did kids start looking for scholarships? So what I found is early as thirteen. A lot of scholarships will start as early as thirteen years old, right? And then a lot, most of them are like sixteen and up. So this is like as long as you're you know, a freshman, freshman in the high school and up can start applying. And what'll happen is if you get awarded these scholarships, most of the colleges or organizations will just hold it for you until you end up going to school. And they'll be like, let us know where you're going, where do we need to send the money and we'll, we'll apply. It. And then institutions will hold scholarship monies for you until you graduate, until you graduate high school and go there too. And then now there's things like students are doing dual enrollment. For those that don't know what dual enrollment is, a student can be in high school and take college classes at the same time. And a lot of times it's no additional cost. It's like it's free if they're taking these college classes while they're enrolled in high school. And so if you're getting these college credits, by the time you actually graduate high school, you can go into college as a junior. And guess what? You didn't save yourself two years of taking out possible loans that you would have taken out. Right. Yes, 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 yes. I love that. And that's a lot of that's a big cheat code into saving a lot of money in college. I know there's something else as far as like just basically testing out of a lot of classes that people can also do as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. yes, you can actually clep out. So you could do clep yes. exams, which is one, right? And you can actually take the test, especially if you know the material, you can actually test out of taking courses and get credit for that class as if you took it or as if you paid for it and took it. So if you already know the material or if you study for it and you want to clep for an exam, you can take that exam and then, and then there are different names, but that's one of the popular names that people understand that you can actually test out of a class that you don't have, even have to take. And so, yeah, so that's a good point. And then, so even with the Taco Bell scholarship, they offered, they've been offering over a hundred million dollars in scholarships. So it's, it's like set over 70 people got the $10,000. And then there was like five to 10 people that got 25,000 each. And then there was a number that got 5,000 each. And so, and it's renewable every year. Wow. So let's say that you get the 25,000 as a freshman, 
you can get it three more times and get $100,000 just from that one scholarship. And, that, and that's how is. much I've had to save for my kids' education. So just to put that into perspective, and best believe, when it, my daughter, my oldest turns 13, is about to be on and popping. Like, we about, about to get that money back. And just, like, I don't, I don't look at, I, I look at that money as a safety net, but mm -hmm, we're going to mm -hmm. do everything. If my, if my daughter wants to go to college and she said that she does right now, but she's eight, mm -hmm, yeah, you know, yeah. we're going to do everything possible to make sure that, you know, she gets in for as little as possible out of our pocket because we look at that 529 money as a generational well tool. So even if mm -hmm. she doesn't use it, her sister will use it, her, there's our other sister will use it. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> or, <Exactly. laughs> or, you know, somebody else in the family that, you know, I can help out. Imagine having an auntie that can give you $100,000 towards your education. Okay. Yes, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but, but, but I bet you I'm going to put in the, the uh, contingencies that you had to apply for at least 100 scholarships first okay there we go yeah yeah that's, that's part <laughs> yes. of the contingency yes. on getting yes. it right yes. yeah yeah <laughs> oh my gosh and then and so oh, there was another point that i wanted to make so a lot of times students will get these big old refund checks right off of student loans but guess what you can get overage checks from scholarships because sometimes yeah organizations that don't like there's some scholarships for example remember i talked about the hope scholarship that adjusts based on however much tuition is at your school right but there's some organizations that are like for example like talk about like $10,000, here you go. And they'll put it on your books or, you know, your account or however you want to look at, you know, four books for your education purposes. But guess what? Anything over the amount that it costs to go to school, a lot of times they'll just put it on your account and then your school issue a refund. And guess what? That money can go into an account and you can use it for the next semester. You could, it's going to go into your bank account, right? So guess what? Imagine if you have $10,000 a semester, right? In overage. And you just have that sitting aside. And let's say after you graduate, you want to go to grad school. But guess what? You can not just graduate debt free. And this, we're not even talking about the automated income streams or anything else. We're just talking about scholarships. But if you get ten thousand a semester, that's twenty thousand dollars a year. In four years, that's eighty thousand dollars in your bank account, and you graduated debt free. <laughs> Listen, that is saying? the dream. That is yeah. the dream. Like, yeah. But the thing is, nobody talks about this. Nobody, nobody shares it. this because this is a game changing, and especially. So not only are you, like you said, going to school debt free, but now you can come out with a good nest egg. Mm -hmm. And that opens up a lot of opportunities for you because sometimes we get out of school and we have this over, like, oh, we're overburdened with debt. So we just yeah. take whatever jobs we can get. And then, you know, your first job is going to set your trajectory for your career. Yeah. Right. And so right. we can make better choices. So I love that. I love that. But we're still on the bottom of this pyramid. We, yes, we, yes. we still got some ground to cover. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, that's <laughs> perfect. And it's a perfect segue because so we talked about scholarships was the base. And then the next part is budgeting or money management. Right. And so listen, if you have. So this is one thing I usually tell college students, especially college students because a lot of times well number one students you'll find will go into these jobs that have nothing to do with their majors like nothing to do with like they'll get these degrees and then they'll just work this job because the number one priority to them is paying these bills like they have an apartment now like <laughs> they're not just gonna be able to just live on campus if they've already graduated it's like, oh, you can stay here as long as you want no they gotta get out right and so now they're like oh i have these college i got this apartment expense i have a car note i have to pay for and all these other expenses so what i usually tell students to do while they're in college or even before that make dream lifestyle what do you want your life to look like after you graduate this is what you want it to look like where are you living you go to bankrate.com. How much is your mortgage? If you, if you pay for a mortgage, right? And then what some students, if they're on their own, right? Like there's sometimes what students will, their first time home, <clears throat> they'll get like a duplex, triplex, or a fourplex, right? So they'll have, multi, so it's called house hacking in, in some terms. But what they'll do is their first, you know, if they get qualified for certain funding for their first house is what they'll do is they'll just get a, you know, multi-unit house, you know, four units or less and they'll just rent out the other spaces. So guess what? If they have enough overage, then their mortgage, you know, the amount that they have to pay the bank for that loan is being covered by the other tenants that are in that same unit with them, right? And it's just like, wow, that's, now they created a passive income stream if they did it right, right out of college and they're a homeowner as well. And then there are a lot of other benefits with that as well. But um, I so also think about that, like when I put my kids in college, like dorms are expensive, food is expensive, all this kind of stuff. And if I can eliminate that expense for my kids, like my kids 
not only have their 529, they have their brokerage accounts. I can yeah. use that money in their brokerage accounts, put a down payment on their first place, whether it's a single family house, a duplex, or, or under a fourplex, you know, I'm going to eliminate that housing expense, yes. which for them means that that's less money that they have to come out of their pocket with. And that's starting in college. So I like Absolutely. that idea from that point, like when you go into college as well, because now yeah. you don't have to worry about housing and then all the lessons that are learned about like being a landlord and all of those kind of things that are mm -hmm. even more transferable skills when you get out into the real world. So I love that example. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely that's also awesome point point. and then so that's why i try to like because then they don't think about oh man well how much am i going to be spending on groceries every month if i want to go out to eat how much am i going to budget for that right this is where we talk about budgeting right and if they've never created a budget which is simply like i like how tiffany aliche puts it she said it's a physical plan for what you're going to do with your money right and so the budget needs to for those that don't know who that is so she says a physical plan for what you plan what you want to do with your money and so if you think that this is how i'm going to want my life to be then now now you have a blueprint of, okay, this is how much it's going to cost each month for me to live. And then once you have that budget, right, or that plan or that blueprint, now you know what you're going to work towards, okay? Now, with that being said, you can use apps like Mint, uh, Intuit, 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 Mint app, and that's an app that you can actually create a, a budget just with one click. And that's just one. It's free. As of right now, it's free. And there's other ones that are free out there, too. You can just do your search and find out what the best budgeting apps are. For, are. Okay. And so now you have a budget and you know exactly what you plan on doing with your money. Okay. And how to manage it. Okay. So now you got the scholarships, you got the overage money, you know what you're planning on, what your plans are doing with your money. And now you can know what you want to do as soon as you graduate without having to be stressed out. You're like, okay, now what am I going to do? And that's, that's the last point. So when you have the overage money, let's say you have a hundred thousand in your bank account, right? After you graduate. Now, if your lifestyle costs 50,000, right? 50,000 a year. Guess what? Now with $100,000 in your bank account, now you're built up an emergency fund or you built yourself up two years to where you're not stressed to just settle for any old job, right? Like you bought yourself time, right? Because time is more valuable than money in reality. So it's just like when you bought yourself time or you bought yourself time back, guess what? Now you're able to move a little differently because if you notice there's some people that move because they're under the stress of like i have i gotta do this i got bills to pay and then they move differently because they're they're in a state of state of i don't want to say scarcity but they're in a state of stress because they're trying to figure out what they have to do with their money right and then there are other people who have bought themselves enough cushion to where they can actually move the way that they want to move right and so you got the scholarships, you got the budgeting piece. And now the third part is the automated income stream. Y'all ready for the automated income streams? All right. We definitely and so, ready for that. <laughs> and so I go over 15 yeah. different automated income streams for college students and high school students. I can apply that. And then, you know, some of the basics or the foundation I like to talk about in the book is like rich dad, poor dad's cash flow quadrant and, you know, different ways to look at money because poor and middle class, they usually just taught employee like get a high paying job and that's it but there's three other quadrants right like you got self-employed you have business owner and you have investor and so the key is you want to move from the left side of the quadrant which is employee and self-employed to the right side of the quadrant which is business owner and investor because that's when you can leverage time and money to work in your favor instead of you working with time and money in against you right and so what we want to do when we're thinking of passive slash automated income streams is that most ki most students, when they go off to college, when they want to get extra money, if they don't feel like working for a job, they'll do things like cut hair or do hair or do nails or, you know, do all these other things to where they yes. want to make some side money, right? But the thing is with that is that it takes away from their study time. It takes away from the class time. Yeah, they're making money, but in theory, the more successful that they are, guess what? the busier they're going to become. And then it's like, they're making more money, but they have less and less time for their studies and their academics are going down. And then it's like one or two choices. Either you're going to have to stop the business or you're going to have to just increase your prices to keep the customer base the same, right? But automated income streams is that you set something up at one time and you do little to no effort in the future to gain more money. So you know how they hear, you hear terms like money in your sleep? Like that's an actual real thing. Like there are things that you can set up one time to where it pays you over and over again 
without any effort on your part or little but we effort. talked about that already kind of with like the house hacking like that's yes. that's, <laughs> yes, that's one absolutely. way you can that's do that definitely one yes. way. yeah uh-huh. absolutely and then so there are other ways so one of the ways i usually tell students about is like there's a simple way where you don't have to come up with a product you don't have to worry about inventory or shipping you don't have to worry about prices you don't have to worry about anything and you can still get paid from it and they're like well, what is that and, I, and then i asked the question i said before i tell you what it is have you ever recommended a restaurant to somebody and everybody's hands go up they're like yeah i said now if you told somebody how great the restaurant was did that restaurant come and find you and say hey we heard that you told such and such about us. Here goes $50. They'd be like, no. <laughs> you know, have you ever recommended a great movie? And then that movie theater hit you up and said, hey, we just want to go ahead and give you $25 because you sent somebody to our movie theater. More than likely, no, right? And so I said, well, what if you could set, what if you could set something up in a way to where every time you referred or recommended something, a product or, or software or something to somebody and get paid and you don't have to worry about any of the fulfillment, would you like to do that? And everybody's hands go up. I said, that by definition is called affiliate marketing. Mm-hmm. Affiliate marketing is to where, and a lot of times these people that you're recommended, most of them probably have some type of affiliate program set up and you just didn't even know. Mm-hmm. So if it's your favorite department store, or let's say it's like, let's say it's like Lowe's or, you know, Home Depot or something like that, for example, and then I try to combine all of them. I say some of you actually have YouTube channels. How many did you know that if you keep working at it, you can actually monetize it? So Google owns YouTube. So it's like, if you're doing something already, why not get paid for it? Mm -hmm. And so what I tell them is that if you're on YouTube and you have currently, if you have at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours, Google will pay you AdSense. It's money Mm -hmm. that they'll pay you just for the traffic alone, just for the Mm -hmm. viewers. And now let's say that, let's say that you have a channel that's talking about green grass. This is always an example I use (laughs) because it's easy to remember. Let's just say you're talking to all the experts that are out there in the world on your interview and you have a podcast, right? Now we're about to combine a lot of them, right? Let's say that you have a podcast and that you're you're interviewing all the experts that are talking about green grass and botany and flowers and everything like that. And guess what? Now everybody's going to, and you record it. You record a video and you upload that video recording of the podcast to YouTube. Now your YouTube viewers are going to go up and they're going to tune in every time you release a new podcast. On podcasts, you can get sponsored by a company. Let's say that Lowe's hears your hears about your podcast and they say, can we be a sponsor? And then sooner or later, you're going to say this podcast was brought to you by Lowe's, you know, or let's say it's one of the products that Lowe's, that Lowe's offers. So for example, if you're talking about green grass, there's a company called Turf Builder, like Turf Builder is a fertilizer company. Let's just say Turf Builder says, hey, can we be a sponsor for your ad? And we'll pay you a thousand or two thousand dollars a month just for a name drop. Sure. <laughs> Why not, right? And then now, guess what? You have a product, and then guess what? If, <laughs> I keep saying guess what? But if you are if you have a, a affiliate link with Lowe's or with Turf Builder, you can put that in the description of the YouTube video and just say, hey, click on the link below and you can get a percentage off. They might cut you a deal, you get a percentage off. Everybody that purchases that fertilizer through that link, you'll get paid. And that's how you can combine the podcasting with the YouTube, with affiliate marketing. And those are just three streams right there. And all you did was talk about one thing, right? And so when students think about ways that they could talk about something that's interesting and they could create something one time and get paid over and over and over for them, the light bulb starts to go off. And they're like, man, like I'm actually doing this, but I didn't know I could get paid for it, right? But you know what? You're rocking people's world here. So I kind of want to bring this back and put every put this into perspective for everyone, because, you know, you might have just thought this is a conversation about how to go to school debt free. But it's really a conversation about reframing the way we look at education and what it can do for us in the meantime, mm-hmm. because no longer are we saying like our kid, like our parents said to us, you know, go to school by any means necessary and get that job. What you're doing at every step of this pyramid is ingraining these tools into these kids that are transferable and that they can use to make money on their own. 
So they can be independent, like come out of school with not only the skill set to work in a certain industry, but also a skill set to work for themselves. Mm -hmm. And this is, like I said, something that people aren't talking about. And so I really hope that our listeners are taking notes and taking heed to this because this is changing the way we look at education and it's empowering our kids to be in a position to set themselves up for financial independence. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Come on now. You better bring that thing full circle. I'm like, I'm talking about all that? <laughs> and so, but, but even just made me think about something when you just said that, because let's say that, you know, the student thinks about all the living expenses that they'll have for a year and it comes up to, let's say 36,000. Okay. So 36,000 a year divided by 12 months, right? So that's 3,000, right? So let's say that one of those passive income streams gets to the point to where you're getting paid a hundred dollars a day, right? hundred dollars a day, 10 days, that's a thousand dollars, you know? And then, so let's just, let's just say on average, let's say if you missed some sales here and there, but let's just say that in three, in a month, you get $3,000. Okay. Let's just say with the, yeah, $3,000, guess what? Now with that passive income stream, you paid for your lifestyle and you're not even working for anybody. So now when you get into the, your field of study, guess what? You're in it more of a passion and it's not for the money. Because many times parents and students too, children will go into a certain career because it's how much money that career is gonna be paying. But guess what? If all your living expenses are being paid for out of something that you created, right? Guess what? Now you don't have the pressure of just going into it for the money, but you have a passion for it. It's something that you want to just become better at because that's, that's where you feel your purpose lies. Right. And you're doing it, whether you have all the money in the world or no money in the world coming from it, you're good financially. So that's why I want people to start having a paradigm shift to where your purpose for your education and degree should be separate from your money. Your money mm -hmm. should be separate from your degree. And usually they're always married together but I want to separate those two because then guess what? They are separate. Just because you might be great at a job does not mean you're going to be financially successful. Exactly. And so when, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so one of the last examples I'll give with the passive income stream, I always give this example because I was working with a student and she's a biology student. And one of the things that she had was a day planner. Mm -hmm. And then she's a biology student, but she always had to, you know, print out a periodic table of elements, put in there, put equations, stuff like that. But if you can manufacture or get a period, get a day planner for biology students created by a biology student, right? And then sell it. And guess what? You sell it for $20. Okay. And now you have biology students around the world every single day that need that book and guess what you created it one time and now it's selling over and over and over again and guess what next year there's going to be a whole nother wave of biology students that that are going to be looking for your planner because guess what you're the one that has it you're the one that knows exactly what biology should do and then you can create a youtube channel that talk about day in the life of biology student right this is what you'll need okay guess what if you're trying to get you know this this is how are some worksheets or day planners that i have this is uh, some stuff you can click the link in my bio and it'll take you to the site to go purchase it now you've created a whole business on something that you're already doing and now you don't have to create anything a lot of people think they have to think well i don't have anything to think about i don't you know i'm working with a men's basketball team here at Savannah State. And one of the things that we're working on was there, one of them was coming up with a course and he used to play on AAU basketball team. And there are a lot of parents, right? Because you can sell this to the parents. A lot of parents who are starting at ground zero or ground one at point A and like, I don't know where to start, what to do. And then he could walk those parents and the, and the children step by step. This is what you want to do. This is your first milestone. And each milestone could be a module. You could package it up, put it on like Thinkific, or you could put it on, or you could put it on uh, Teachable or any of these different portals to where you could take your information, package it up, and then sell it as a course. And guess what? Now people could just go through it and you're the cheat code. People are looking at, you already ended up on the other side. You went through AAU, you're on a, sport, a division one sports basketball team. And now my son's just starting out. What's the path on how to get there? Guess what? People will pay you left or right for that information. 
That's you know, right. And, it, and because, so, yeah, you know. it is a cheat code. And so you're you're shortcutting all of the things that they don't have to learn about to get to the goal faster. And I love it because it's all a reframe and it's just like changing the way that you think, period. And I think a, this is episode is just golden because there's just so many lessons here. Yeah. But it's really about just like this whole reframe in general. Number one, we're not paying for school anymore. Not no. only are we not paying for school, we're making that pay us we're learning budgeting and money management tools in this process and we're also generating passive income so that we have the power to have control over our finances so whatever job you go into is just going to be secondary and for me a person who thinks about retiring early and just making work optional it gives you a lot of choices. Number one, you show up in your place of employment differently because you don't have to be there. You want to be there. That's number one. And so you usually are outperform everybody there. Mm -hmm. And then number two, if you want to step away and work on your passions, you can, because if your living expenses are covered, then you are not worried about money. Right. Right. And so it just, it just fulfills you overall and just, it's just, I feel like it's just a great ROI just for society in general. Because yeah. now you're, you're working. And usually what happens is people in those positions are the ones that are helping people. These mm -hmm. are the people that are giving back to the community. These are people that are empowering people to do things, you know, for themselves that have never been in that position to do so or teaching people things. And so I love all these skill sets that, that this brings. And this just started as a conversation around how not to go into debt for college. And right. so I really like hope people here are like taking notes and really listening because this is a whole different way of thinking. And I was even thinking like, as an example of, you know, just the people that have gone through this or have reframed, you know, how they think about education. Shit, they can start a whole social media platform around that. Like, yeah, let's think about yeah. college. Let's think about yeah. education a little bit differently. This is what mm -hmm. I did. And mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like just yeah. that, selling that information right. is right. super valuable. And so yes. like, it, it's just it's so many things unlocked here. And I'm just like, ah, like so grateful for this information. <laughs> but I do like kind of want to bring it full circle because you like started with you basically Go, getting into college, getting a one point something GPA, mm -hmm. like having to pull yourself up from there, losing scholarships, having to take out loans, getting a great job, getting laid off and starting from zero. Mm -hmm. Now you're in a position to impact so many others. And it's because it's not because of all the things that you've had access to. It's in spite of it's right. the things that you, the, all the failures that could have took yeah. you out that have positioned mm -hmm. you to help so many other people. And so I just love what you're doing because Thank I've you. heard about people that help people get scholarships, but this is a whole reframe and mm -hmm. how you approach life in general. So if people want to like work with you, we need to know. The good people, <laughs> I know they're like, I want to work with Chris because yeah. I mean, like, you, <laughs> you are super right. motivational. Like you, you oh, love amped up, it. keep it real. <laughs> and like, and, but you come with so many gems and so many tools that people need. So how can we work with you, Chris? Yes. Yeah, so the easiest way, just follow me on Instagram, right? Message me. I'm trying to get my followers up anyway. Like, I don't even be pushing it. Those are like people that I come in contact with. Like, you got Instagram? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm trying to build that up now. So, uh, but yeah, The Fin Lit Guy. So it's T-H-E, The Fin Lit Guy. The Fin Lit Guy on Instagram. You can follow me there. And and then we'll just go from there. Yeah. The Fin Lit Guy. You can, yeah. <laughs> Make sure you guy. guys are following the Fin Lit Guy. He drives gems. And so I know I'm excited to see what's next for you. I know you're coming up with some amazing ways that people can work with you and we gotta work together on something too you all know yeah that, absolutely <laughs> like if you want me to if you want me to come and speak at your school at your college or at yes. your organization just let me know i mean i love i love to speak it to students parents grandparents like because i know it could be a scary thing when you're thinking about my child my grandchild my loved one is getting ready to go to school and i have no idea what to do i don't have any money saved up and uh, like the FAFSA, right? <laughs> like we didn't even mention the FAFSA, but the FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. 
every year October 1st it opens up so if you haven't done that go ahead and fill that out because most schools that's usually the universal application for federal funding and for state grants and scholarships if they have any and then there are other schools like you know some more of the Ivy League schools they do what a CSS profile a college board that you can fill out so they can find out what information that you have to figure out if they got have scholarship monies for you. So just do those two basic things and that, that'll definitely help out. And then uh, message me and uh, message me on Instagram and type, message me something like free book. That's all I'll know <laughs> that you'll hear, hear this. Yes. And then what I'll do for the first, I don't know how many people I'll cut it off at, but I'll, <laughs> I'll mail you a copy of my book. If you, you want to see what it's like, it's a uh, thinlitbook.com. It'll take you to the Amazon link and it'll show you what the book is about if you're interested, right? If not, then the scholarship chapter alone hopefully gets you some results that you're looking for. And that's that's my goal. My mission is just to help change the narrative and just make sure that we don't need these student loans ever again, like nobody. No, I think that's so dope. And thank you so much for offering the free book to my audience. Yeah, we'll put a link absolutely. in there so they can DM you to get these free books. But I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart because this information, even me with all my degrees, and if you don't know, I have two master's degrees. Like the the the. Let's go. We we not go. We not just gonna pass by that, <laughs> right? Because I know some sleepless <laughs> nights and some teary nights. Oh my god! You know, yes. and and all yes. of that. So I know it's a lot of sacrifice. So just doing that is. Like, but navigating okay. fine, but 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 navigating how to pay for school has always been one of those things that's intimidating. And it's just like when you go to student aid offices, they're not very helpful. And so this is some really good information oh, and it's very dynamic. It's always going to change. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like having a resource like you to go to is super valuable. And so, you know, you guys make sure you're following him. But even for me, like I went to school 20 years ago. I don't mm -hmm. know what to do for my daughter. My daughter's eight. I'm planning for her. But right. I'm not going to necessarily know how to navigate the system right. because things are going to change. And so Absolutely. this is information that we really, really need. But this is something that we have to stay up to date on. And so I appreciate you because I know I'm going to need you. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Whatever you need, yes. I got you. <laughs> yes, for sure. But anyway, make sure you guys are following the Finlit guy. Make sure you guys check out his books. There's going to be links in the show notes for everything that he mentioned. Overall, I just wanted to thank you so much because, man, first of Thanks all, you're just me. hella easy to talk to. I appreciate and you it. you have so much, <laughs> so much information. But really, you have reframed, even for me, how to look at approaching education cool. and just how to uh, and, and how it ties into how we think about how we want to live our lives. Mm. And so I know he will have so much to take away from this episode. So I really, really, from the bottom of my heart, cool. appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate here. you having me. Absolutely. <laughs> All right.